Sutta Nipada, Danya, the Cattleman, Part 6 of 9, on Between Master and Disciples, given in English on December 30th, 2019, in New Land Ashram, Taiwan, also known as Formosa. The Buddha, I am in no one's employ. He has no boss. Yeah. I wander the whole world, like the monks. Yeah. Yeah. On the reward of my awakening, no need for earnings is to be found. So if you want rain God, go ahead and rain. rain. You know everything. Right? What for do I keep saying anything? <laughs> you see, one relies on every material thing that he can earn and keep to make him feel safe and proud and, you know, secure. One relies on nothing, absolutely nothing. He didn't even earn any money. He has no boss. He has complete freedom. Yeah. So he wandered around anywhere he wanted to. And he earned the reward, his upkeep, uh, by his awakening. Yes. And no need for earnings is to be found. No need to ask him how much he earns a month. <laughs> no need for paying you know, taxes or you know, anything. Truly, this is really a beautiful life. When I wasn't a master yet, I had very little money from my working before, you know, not many years, but in Germany, in Europe, you can take out your pension in advance. And I even took that and offered it to some masters, yeah, or any ashram where I stay. And at one time I had almost nothing. <laughs> but you don't feel this heavy burden, you know, you don't worry about the tax payments, you don't worry about if your building here or your ashram is legal or not. You don't need to worry about paying for employees or buying this and that, nothing. At that time, I was happier than now. Oh, of course, I'm happy now in different, in different ways, you know. I'm happy that I'm blessed to be able to remind some people to live a virtuous life and to save lives apart from their own, to save them from suffering from hell and retribution in this lifetime, and save some animals' lives, yeah? Save maybe the planet, yes. I'm happy, of course, it's a different happiness. Huh? It's a bigger happiness, yeah? It's more satisfactory. But at that time, for the worldly situation, I was my best. <laughs> That's all I wanted to do, <laughs> not to worry about anything not to have a house to even to pay a mortgage on or to uh, pay tax for my motorcycle, whether or not I pay tax on time or not, you know. When you have something, you always worry about the things that run after you. The tax time, you know, the business, all kind of things. If you have a house and you have to worry about it, if it's leak, and then you have to keep cleaning it, you know? So truly, if I could have stayed in India, continued <laughs> the life of a so-called disciple, <laughs> or gone from one ashram to another, or just wandered around with very little possession. I had little. I have only two pairs of pyjama, punjab, and a, and a stick, wooden stick that I found in the forest. I truly understand what the Buddha was saying, you know? The life of no burden, no regrets, no connection with anything but connected to everyone. Feel so light, so beautiful, so beautiful, so free. I had less than what I have now, very, very much less. As I have told you already, I could eat some chapati. I bake myself with the wood I found in the forest, dry wood and just uh, some water, you know, and then boil the water and, and drink. 
And sometimes I couldn't afford a samosa because I couldn't say no to myself, but otherwise I could not really afford it. I didn't have a lot of money, but I felt so good compared to now physically. Physically speaking, I feel like a prisoner nowadays. Yeah, I can't go anywhere without being recognized. <laughs> Even my own kitchen, uh, you know, want my attention instead of giving me what I need. They want what they need and make trouble. Just to go near the master and want to chat or want master to look at you, maybe touch your head, etc., etc. So much for selflessness. A selfless, you know, lecture all these years. Humans are humans, they don't change, yeah. So now we continue with the two <laughs> opponents. <laughs> you can see the opposite, huh? You can see the opposite kind of life. Which life do you prefer? Tell me honestly. The life of a Buddha, wandering monk, or the life of the cow herd? <laughs> life of the Buddha? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow, tough. Really? How many of you want to be like a monk, the Buddha's life? Raise hand. Okay, stay here. I will feed you and close you as monks. Stay. I have enough money to feed you all your life and give you two pairs, three pairs of clothes. <laughs> If you stay, if you have no problem at home, <laughs> if you really think you're worth it, you can stay, I don't mind. Mm. The life of monks also has tests, eh? a lot of tests and temptations make you fall. Not because you are a bad being or human, but your karma is calling everywhere, every step of your monkhood. Very difficult to go steady, go, no. The more you want to be free, the more shackles you will find. And everybody else look at your monk's robe, expect things from you, uh, blessing, <laughs> uh, praying for them, and whatever, or looking after their, their cows, remember, <laughs> oxen, yeah, or building hospital for them, etc., like the Reverend Nun uh, Cheng Yen, in uh, Taiwan, to Chi Kong Te Hui, yeah, compassionate uh, association, something like that, yeah. They will expect a lot from you and give you nothing, <laughs> maybe a very little offering, an apple and orange, and expect you to pray for their whole family and five, six generations as well. Mm. <sighs> they will not just uh, uh, be with you. Uh, respect you, but they expect things from you. That's what makes many monks and nuns' lives difficult, because they cannot fulfill uh, the, the expectations of other people who, who do nothing, just want things from you. When I was uh, invited to be an abbess in a small temple newly built in Germany, oh my God, I wish I had never accepted that invitation. <laughs> They kept calling me all the time to the temple, and especially one woman. She was telling me hours on end about how her husband was unfaithful to her, blah, blah, in detail and everything. And I said, oh, okay, okay, that's enough. I heard about that already. Could you please let me go? I have to go do so. You are not a monk. You have no compassion. You have to listen to me. You must uh, make me feel comforted. How can you not listen to me? I am suffering, and you don't want to listen to my pain. You are no monk. You have no mercy in your heart. Blah, blah, blah. blah. She's scolding me a lot. Yeah, but after two hours already, same stuff. She keeps telling me how bad her husband is and how, how faithful she is, how much she's in love with him and he's not. So I said, you are Buddhist. You should know sometimes karma breaks you up. Oh, bring you together, and when the karma is finished, then there's nothing much you can do. You should accept it, move on, maybe find another husband who is more suitable for you. No, 
Continue her old story all the time. Every day she talk no end. And if I wanted to stop, she scold me that I was no nun, <laughs> that I had no love in my heart. <laughs> Hey, she doesn't care that I have to take care of all the people who come to the temple. She doesn't care that I have to do liturgy, a morning, evening service in front of the Buddha. She didn't care, you know. I had to listen to her no matter what time, midnight, or two, three in the morning, Sunday, rainy day. Oh, man. If any nun met this kind of lay disciple, I think she'd run away from the temple. <laughs> Even if she continued to be a nun, she would hide herself somewhere. You know, no, nobody would find her. Only monkeys or rabbits, you know, they have no problem with you. Yeah. <laughs> Truly, when I live in uh, Himalaya, some part of Himalaya, many monkeys were around. And if I had some peanuts, I gave it to them. But they never quarrel with me, they never criticize me that I had no love, that I gave them only peanuts and nothing else. <laughs> no, very grateful and friendly. <laughs> but if you are with another human, just one even, you will have trouble. She will make trouble for you, she will give you trouble, she will give you many pieces of her mind, so no matter if these pieces are good or not, she will make trouble. Yeah, I was in that temple in New York, I told you, huh? And there was one of the other nuns who came, and I told you about already. She disrupted herself, just very normal, didn't want to be a nun anymore, and came to my temple to stay there. And uh, she always wanted to talk about anything. She was very talkative compared to me, you know, and I said, no, please go and bow to the Buddha or meditate. Uh, you know how to meditate. It's, I have to go now meditate. Even if I went on retreat, she's like a lot of <laughs> love letters <laughs> under my, my door, uh, complaining about anything. The whole story, always, every day. So as long as the master abbot was not in the temple, I shut myself in my room, did retreat. She, she still could talk through the letter, you know. <laughs> She wrote letter and slide them under the door for me every day. I can't remember what she was talking about. Yeah, this is a problem. Just one more extra ex-nun, <laughs> and your life is different already. I don't know why she had to talk a lot like that. Contrary to me, before I took over this uh, job, <laughs> I didn't talk a lot. I wrote things, you know, I read books, but I didn't talk. I didn't want to talk to anyone. And talking to them a little bit only make me feel very tired, contrary to now. <laughs> okay, we continue, huh? Mm. Do you have a bus to catch? No. If you have to go, you go. Oh, don't make trouble. Your visa, your family, your debt, okay, your work, that's what makes you go. Nothing else, okay? Not me. Mm. Okay, this is a cattle man talking again. They had a long conversation. <laughs> Maybe they met each other and then talked, okay, and somebody recorded it. So the cattle man, there are cows, young bulls, cows in calf, uh, and breeding cows, mm -hmm. and a great bull, the leader of the herd. So if you want to reign, Rain God, go ahead and rain. Meaning he has so many possessions. Animals were people's security in the old times. Yeah, if they had a lot of animals, it means they were well off and they were secure because the animals breed more siblings, you know, uh, younglings, and then they would get more and more rich and they could sell them, milk them, or do whatever, you know, sure enough. And before, in the old times, when you wanted to marry a girl, <laughs> you, instead of, you know, uh, SM Celestial jewelry, you give them cows, pigs, <laughs> as a dowry. You know? Yes. Yeah. Yes or no? Yes. Uh, in Vietnam, it was like that. Also, some jewelry, if you couldn't afford it. If not, how many cows they would demand? And uh, a mattress to sleep on, uh, and some new clothes maybe, but cows, pigs, Gold, that was the foremost demand for my daughter. <laughs> Imagine that. You exchange your precious living human 
beautiful being for some cows and feel very happy. Uh, lucky nowadays we exchange daughter for cars, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for some gold. <laughs> it's similar. It's like business. Huh? So don't do business in your life, in the life of your children, okay? Ah, yeah, of course, nowadays your money talks, you know, you have to have it in order to feel safe, huh? <laughs> so if you want a daughter of somebody, the father immediately asks, how much do you earn? How much can you give? How much do you have every month so that you can take care of yourself and my daughter? And uh, maybe one boy says, oh, about 5,000 U.S. dollars per month. So the father is happy. Okay, for that I give you another 5,000 together, so you'll be okay then. So how do you expect to get that 5,000? Are you working in some good, good job? No, that is from your daughter's pocket, <laughs> from her monthly allowance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 5,000. <laughs> Because the daughter of the rich family, you know, she has her monthly allowance and that's just okay for him already. <laughs> the father of the bride thought that he was working to earn that. <laughs> <laughs> 